this is my Tetris thing that I attempted to build. And because I received a comment of someone wanting to get a more in-depth look of it, that I am doing this. So, I'm going to be going into more detail on how this works. So basically, the first thing that I did was think of how this would work. Because in Tetris, things are... Blocks are either on or off, and they're either on the ground or falling. So, I have two memory storages for each of the pixels. So, one of them is right here, right there. This one, right here. And then there's another one all the way right here. And the way this works is I have it so each pixel can send information to the one next to it, both of them next to it, and the one underneath it. So if you need to move a piece left or right, it'll just, you know, do that. So anyway, let me just build an explanation here. Alright, so we have our two colors, uh, I don't know, oh right, this is what I'm supposed to do. Someone gave a good diagram, but... The first storage, the one closest to me, one right, you know, this area, that will, that's the storage for all the falling things. So there. And then the further storage would be things that are on the ground. And then what is actually displayed is, uh, you know, both of them. If that makes any sense at all. But then, basically, I can do that. Right. So there's this things on the ground things in the air, and then what is displayed. And then when... Right, I'm getting ahead of myself. What do I do now? Right, okay. So when a piece is falling, you can move it to the left, to the right, or down. And... That is done... Using these buttons. Either you move it to the left, to the right, or you press nothing, and it goes down. But how do you detect if it's going to hit something? Well, that's what we have these for. The purple line, this line, and this line. One of them detects if it's going to hit something when it, if it goes down. One of them detects if it's going to hit something when it goes to the right. And the other one detects when it's going to hit something when it goes to the left. How this works is need more colors. Basically, it takes those, and I need a new one now. It takes them, and if these are right here, and the red is supposed to be right there, it would check to check if it can go to the left, it would basically project what the red is, but shift it all to the right. And that is done by shifting everything to the right. 
So the red line from, okay, yeah, that, where is it? The memory cell is here, and it actually sends stuff back, which then goes in all three directions after I get to it. Yeah, this gray line is it sending memory back from what's on the ground. And then it compares it to the left, it compares it to the right, and eventually it compares it to what is uh, above it. So it compares to the left, compares to the right, and it compares what is above it all at once. And if any of these checks get triggered, it would know exactly which one. So right now, the piece can go in any direction, you know, except for the fact that the checks would also count the walls, so these pieces would be at a... Yeah. So then those would be checked as well. And because it's touching the wall, the green would come out and prevent it from going to the right any further. That's a bunch of checks it has to do, but it does them all at once with these three lines. So these three lines will then stop the piece from going in that direction perfect and fine. So, if it... Yeah. So if the blue thing does have something below it, and it hits that check, you know, it's like, oh, I am going to land on something because it is going to land on something. What would it be? Yellow. Yeah. So if blue is there, the red would be here, the yellow would be the check, and since the blue is overlapping with the yellow, that means red is below it, which it is. So it will get deleted from here and you know how I said it can move in up down left right it can move to the right to the left to down well I didn't say but it can move to a different to the other storage so it will be deleted from this storage and moved onto this one and from this screen you wouldn't be able to tell the difference because it just moved from that to that, but, you know, it's all the same color, so, yeah. Now to talk about how it actually does move. This is one of the memory cells that I took, but basically, it is very basic. I just took this, and this is a memory cell, and now all it has to do is, I made sure it had to be able to send things downward. Okay, so it sends something downwards, it has to be able to send something to the right, it also has to be able to receive something from the right, then it has to be able to send and, then it also has to send and receive from this way as well. And then, 
it also has to be able to send send it that way and then it also has to what else oh yeah it also has to be able to be erased at any time And I somehow managed to fit this extremely compact into this one thing. And it was an absolute nightmare. And that is just copy and pasted. And I wonder why the game lags, like, seriously. So it's very precise timing on all of this. I just copy and pasted it. So basically what, you, what I do is I have all of these blocked off so they cannot send or receive anything and then at the perfect moment so pink is send it down orange it send it to one direction black is clear green is send it to the other direction so at the precise moment i need i send this send this line to two tenths of a second later each of them have to last for two tenths of a second. So in that time, the redstone signal will go from these two. And they will transfer one by one. And go in their direction. Their own direction. And it happens in such a perfect and precise timing that none of them intersect with each other. So any little amount of lag from Bedrock Edition ruins it. In Java Edition, it would just slow down the game. In Bedrock Edition, it stays the same speed but screws everything. So I have a bunch of really, really compact things that... Mm, ooh, yeah. As you can see in my actual diagram, we have the line sending it this way. We have the line over here sending it this way. We have the pink line sending it downwards. We have the black line clearing it from below. We have this line over here taking it to the next thing over there. Then we have the black line coming in all the way from over there. And yeah, it gets crazy quickly. So if we take this part. Everything I just explained of going left, right, down, all that is this entire section this this middle section this this section right here in the middle is detecting can it go down left or right by doing the thing i said earlier by just showing the other thing in the down, left, or right. I hope you got that earlier, because I'm not explaining it again. Uh, and then this, this is the... This green stuff is the clearing lines. That's whatever. These gray ones are the storage cells for what's on the ground. And, you know, it sends it backwards to do all the checks, and it sends it forwards to do... Uh, this screen thing. Did I mention the brown part took forever and I had to hand place every single one of the blocks in this entire area? It sucked. Okay, another very difficult thing about this is... You know how I said blue screen, red screen, purple screen thing, whatever? The blue screen has to go all the way to this purple thing without being touched by anything. So it takes a long, magical journey. From all the way from right here, it goes through all the checks, keeps going, goes through all of this, and then goes past the, the, the landed storage and just keeps going. It, it merges with the storage, but just keeps going all the way to its individual pixel. And that is ridiculous. And right. This blue line clears all of the, clears all of these. For the, 
these storages, I have it so it can only move down. It doesn't need to move left or right. So that made it a little bit easier. But having to send it backwards and also doing the line checks. Oh, the line checks sucked so bad. To check if a line is cleared, I had to, you know, make a giant AND gate with all of these in a line. And that's what this green line is. So as soon as it detects a line is full, it just uh, clears it and sends everything above it downwards one. So if you clear multiple lines, it might not work too well, but adding more delay should probably help it. Right, that's all the simple part, the stuff that is just copy and paste. Once you figure it out once, you don't really have to figure it out again. Then there is this yellow monstrosity at the top, and this thing down at the side. When you're playing Tetris, there's three different game states that the game can be in. It's either the pieces falling, uh, right, okay. So it's either you're rotating your piece at the top, which is a genius idea I saw from someone else who made Tetris in Minecraft. Uh, so it's either you're rotating it at the top, it's falling out of the top, or it's in the regular field and you're playing it. So when it's... When you're choosing a piece from the top, the two buttons are doing something special. This one would rotate it, and this would drop the piece. And that would be up there. I, don't, I can't remember which state is which. But when you get into the choosing and placing thing... Okay, when you get into the choosing and placing thing it would, it goes to this randomizer, then into this red coder, and chooses a random piece. Every time you press the rotate button, it goes to a different uh, rotated state of that piece, which is encrypted by this giant uh, thing. Can't remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, ROM. It's the it's it's like storage for a computer, except it's hard coded in there. So every single rotation of every single piece has its own thing, which I clearly marked above it. And they're all nicely laid out with torches. And then those torches go over here to where I copy and pasted more of the things, just right up here. And then, you know, you start your piece starts falling, and then when it's falling from this section, it can't move left or right, because I won't let you, until it is completely out of the top section, which there is a check for that. It's this line right here. Then it's in the big field where it goes left, right, up, down. Then when it lands, it starts the cycle all over again. So, left or right, it goes in here, it keeps the storage until its next uh, loop cycle thing, and it has a bunch of whatever to do. This won't let it through until it is the loop cycle thing. The line won't let it go to the left if, the, if it collides to the left. This line won't let it go to the right if it collides to the right. So, if it will collide with the left or right, and it won't go there, it'll instead default to going down, but if it cannot go down, then it goes over and it saves the line to the thing over here where it is on the ground now. That is basically the simple theory behind all of it. Uh, what have I not talked about? Oh, right. This brown stuff, it just moves all the lines closer together. And this is the smallest p 
pixel screen design 2x2. Two two. It's really easy, found it online. I can show it off really quickly. But just take something Something like this, it doesn't add too much delay. But now, you got yourself a nice two by two screen. And each pixel can be individually controlled by its own thing. Man, this took, this brown stuff took forever. Right. Don't mind those random levers. That was for the fabulous thumbnail. Because this thing is unplayable. Yeah. Can't remember what this red line does. Oh yeah, that sends it down. Right, it was, it took so much trial and error just to get everything very compact without it, uh, you know, interfering with anything. If I would do this again, I would probably, maybe, not make it so horribly precise on Bedrock Edition. It, it, it lagged the game so bad that visual glitches were, like, ruined, were very common and i wish i got a screenshot of it but i didn't there's a line a lot of lines going up and down and this would have been so cool if it worked but in theory each part individually worked when i tested them individually this thing is so compact in places that i can't even like move just Absolutely gorgeous redstone right there. It's basically all I have to show off. And if you're going to try building this on your own, I really wish you luck. Because it is definitely going to take a while and be a challenge. But yeah, please let me know how that goes, because I will really love to see it.